Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, the previous lecture was about introduction into transversal oscillation. Um, and um, basically we were talking about complexity of uh, real transversal um, oscillations that um, let's just talk about rope if you are um, have some kind of a well let's say in, in infinite rope but you have one end of it and you are making harmonic oscillations up and down the waves will go along the stretch of the of the rope but every segment of the rope will actually move also up and down relatively speaking re repeating the movement of the of the end which we are which we are using to, to drive the whole oscillations well um it was much more complex than just up and down movement of every segment and i did explain in the previous lecture that it's actually some kind of a um, combination of vertical and a very small horizontal displacement as well now this lecture uh, will further simplify um, our model and we are talking about model we are not talking about reality reality is always much more complex so we will consider a model um, of this <coughs> ideal rope which does not have this small horizontal movement it has only up and down movement and each segment basically repeats the segment of the driving end of the oscillation of the oscillation of the rope so this is a simplified model of transversal um, oscillations uh, using this ideal rope as an example and obviously it's a continuation of the previous lecture where I was just explaining the complexity of the problem and this is a simplified model now this lecture is part of the course called physics for teens presented on unizor.com I do suggest you to use the website unizor.com um, to basically um, go through the whole course because um, this is the course physics for teens is a course and it has obviously lots of different lectures they are logically connected to each other <coughs> now there is a prerequisite course on the same website it's called mass for teens you can't uh, study physics without knowing mass and calculus is a must um, now the website is completely free there are no advertisement no strings attached so pure knowledge right so let's just go into this simplified model of ideal rope so basically it looks like this whenever we are moving up and down this end of the rope and let's just con con consider the rope is infinite now what we are saying is that every segment every point on this rope makes the same movement up and down movement uh, as the uh, driving end which we are actually uh, using to, 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 to initiate the whole oscillation process um, right so no horizontal displacement only up and down exactly the same way as this one which is not what's happening in reality in reality the, the real movement is some kind of elliptical movement but we are not talking about this we are just completely ignoring the horizontal a very small by the way horizontal displacement and we're talking about the vertical displacement of every point considering it's repeating the movement of the end now yes it is repeating however there is a delay obviously because whenever you start here every other point repeats obviously the um, movement of this but with a certain time delay and this time delay depends basically on the <coughs> um, uh, wave propagation uh, how speedy how fast these waves propagate through the rope and it depends on many factors primarily on physical um, properties of, of this ideal rope which we are talking about there are certain 
um, uh, materials, maybe the rope can be made. Maybe it's made of steel, maybe it's made of uh, some kind of a fabric or whatever it is it's made of. And it's always different because it depends on its mass uh, per, let's say, unit of uh, length and m maybe some kind of flexibility. I, I don't know. There are lots of physical characteristics which should be analyzed to find what exactly is the speed of uh, wave propagations. Now, we did talk about, um, at the previous lecture, about the propagation of the waves, that we were considering a small segment with a rigid rod in between. So if you are making up and down movement of this one, and there is no friction, let's say, and this is a solid rod, this one will follow this, but with a delay. So it will be something like, like this. If we start this, it will be movement of this type. And uh, that basically means that, again, the, the movement will be repeated, but with a certain delay, which depends on the speed of propagation um, of the wave in this particular um, uh, rope. So this speed is actually a physical characteristic, and it should be given. What else should be given to find out exactly how our segments each each point actually in a row, how it behaves. Well, very simple. Well, first of all, we will introduce a system of coordinates. So the vertical displacement will be a function. Why? If this is the point, so it will be a function of how far this point is from the beginning and obviously of time. So we have to define this function to find out exactly how um, our point is moving in the vertical direction. And again, our assumption is it's an ideal rope, it's ideal uh, kind of a conditions and the simplified model when this particular point is repeating exactly the movement of this, but with a time delay. Okay, now time delay, what is the time delay? I told you just now that the speed of propagation of the waves is some kind of a um, characteristic which should be given, but, but we can't really uh, find it out from, from, other, um, from other properties. So, let's say V is the speed of propagation. So if x is the um, different, uh, the, the distance in, uh, in the length of the rope from the point which we are interested in and in the beginning, and the wave is propagating with certain speed v, that means that if you will divide x by v, you will have a time delay. between this movement and this movement. Okay, that actually is sufficient to basically find out what exactly the oscillation of this point is. If we know this one, so let's say, what is the uh, oscillation of this one? This is y of 0, comma, comma, t. So 0 means 0 distance from the beginning, so if this function is given, and v is given, then we can find out the time delay as a function of distance, because we can always divide distance by speed, get a time delay. And I can say, and this is very important, that function y of xt. Now, what I'm saying is, it's supposed to behave exactly the same as function y of uh, 0 and t, which is the oscillation, vertical oscillation of the beginning, of the ending, um, ending or beginning, whatever, of this rope, driving end, let's put it this way. So, it's supposed to be exactly like this, but with the time delay. Now, we actually know from, I don't know, from mass course or just from general logical observation, that if one function 
is different from another function uh, only by a shift of the argument the whole graph is shifted which means that in this particular case it should, it's supposed to be equal to zero chi comma t minus um, x divided by v minus time delay so if I will put into this function what was its um, value uh, time delay back then I will have what is um, value of this function at this point now so if t is now t minus x divided by v is how uh, this one because it's zero how this one behaved x divided by v seconds ago and after x divided by v seconds from this the movement actually uh, was repeated at point x now this is a very important consideration and I would like you to completely understand it again if you would like to know what exactly the value of y at point x now you have to see what was the value of uh, displacement at, at this point 0 x divided by v seconds ago because by this x by v seconds this movement would be propagated to this point so, so that's very important consideration from which we will derive basically this function if we know this now what is this function well it again it's supposed to be given because that's exactly how we are oscillating uh, this this rope up and down now if we assume that this is some kind of uh, harmonic oscillation which usually people do we can say that y of 0 comma t is equal to a uh, now in this case we, we, let's start with sine it can be sine it can be cosine it all depends on initial conditions so let's say it's sine of omega t now why I put sine well because let's consider that at time t we do not have any displacement from this so the point is exactly this if my point at time zero is let's say on, on a maximum so it will be a cosine but it will be still the same oscillations it all depends on initial conditions okay so we know this function but if you know this function we know this function so y of x comma t is equal to a comma sine of omega t minus x divided by v basically that's it everything else is just transformation of this equation which basically defines completely defines the motion of this point at any distance x at any time t however what people usually do they introduce certain other characteristics of oscillations and they are just replacing one variable with another so let's just talk about different variables which characterize the oscillations What kind of variables? Well, obviously we have a time variable. Now, what else? What's interesting is that this is periodic function. Now, the periodic function, and what is the period in this case? Well, from zero, let's say, to this. This is one period. Uh, no, uh, from zero to zero, I'm sorry. From zero to zero. So this is one period, this is another period, etc. So the function has periodic characteristic 
and obviously um, there is something which is called the wave um, length. So the wavelength lambda is this distance where this particular point is exactly the same position as the previous one. Well, the shortest distance, obviously. Whenever we are completely repeating the whole movement, but then the movement repeats again. So this is this piece from from this to this is lambda, and this to this is another lambda. So lambda is the wavelength. The shorter the lengths, the wavelengths, the more frequently, obviously, um, our um, our oscillations are happening. So lambda is wavelengths. Now, what also is interesting, if we have lambda as a wavelength, we have the period, T. This is the time of a period. So it's the time which takes the wave to go up and down and down again. So if it goes up, down, and then down, and then up, and that's the end of it, well, the time during which any particular point is making these movements, which is a complete cycle. It goes from, let's say, from initial position of zero, it goes up, then goes down to zero, then down, and then up, get, go back to up. <coughs> the time is called the, the period. Now, um, obviously, in this particular case, if we know the period, uh, if you know the wavelengths and we know the period, let's just short it to period. period. Then immediately from here, the speed of wave propagation is obviously lambda divided by t. The length divided by time during which it happens, that's basically the v. And again, this depends on different properties of the, of the rope, the propagation. Um, even if, if it's the same rope, but we will start oscillating it uh, much faster, we will reduce the uh, wavelengths and the t, the period, will also be reduced but the propagation, which depends only on the characteristic of the rope, will probably be the same, well, at least approximately. Now, what else do we have? Well, obviously we have amplitude. That's the maximum deviation, up or down from the middle point. Now, and amplitude is participating here. <coughs> <coughs> now, um, in this particular formula, we have this omega, which is angular frequency. Now, what is angular frequency? Well, if you will take the regular sinusoid, then this period is 2 pi, right? So this is a sign uh, of t. Or of x, it doesn't really matter. Uh, now, if you will have function sine of 2t, so this is t and this is y. Now, what will be the graph in this particular case? Well, if the period of this is 2 pi, period of this would be 2t should be equal to 2 pi, which means period will be for t, it will be only pi, which means it will be like this, if this is 2 pi and this is pi. So the period will be twice as small, right? And basically, if you will have a function sine of omega t, the period will be 2 pi divided by omega. <coughs> so 
So this is the function which basically combines uh, <coughs> which basically combines uh, uh, angular frequency and the period. Now, using this particular equation, which is basically immediately following from the definition of period and, and, and angular frequency, <coughs> and using another thing which is kind of obvious, we can transform this formula to many different waves, many different ways, waves. Um, for example, I can say that this is equal to A sine of omega t minus, okay, um, what I can do is um, instead of omega times x divided by v, I will use omega from here, which is 2 pi divided by t, right? So what will I have? I will have uh, omega x, so omega is this, this is 2 pi x divided by t and divided by v, okay? <coughs> Now, what is v times t from here? That's lambda. So I can put instead of this, I can put lambda. And now let me introduce one more characteristic. Um, 2 pi divided by lambda is called wave number. Pure artificial uh, concept just to make it easier and write it down as a sine of omega t minus k x. Now, what does it mean actually? Now, this is a very important actually form of the same equation. And the form it says that the uh, uh, motion of the point at distance x from the beginning is exactly the same law as the uh, initial oscillations and the initial is a sinus omega t in this particular case shifted in phase by um, distance multiplied by wave number it's a little bit more convenient representation of the same equation so um, in the notes for this lecture on this website, unizor.com, uh, and I have notes for every lecture, by the way, which is basically like a textbook, um, I can put not only this, but also some other forms of the same equation, just basically substituting one after another. So now we will use, now we are using this type of substitution, but we can use many others. So there are many different forms of the same equation, but all of them are basically the same in, in their major um, sense, major form, which is actually that equation which represents the movement of point at, uh, at distance x, is almost the same as the one um, uh, which represents the beginning of the rope, or driving end of the rope, whatever you call it, <coughs> shifted by phase by something, which depends obviously on different characteristics and one of the characteristics is obviously the length the phase is shift in phase is proportional uh, to the length which is kind of obvious and all we basically need to know is the coefficient of proportionality which in this case is called uh, wave number now I started with a sign because I was assuming that in the beginning we have in the middle point and then I go up and down. I can start from the upper point and then go all the way down from A to minus A. In which case, what's changed? Well, the only thing which actually is changed is instead of sine, I can actually use cosine. And that what gives me the initial uh, A times cosine of omega t, 
will give me a t is equal to zero uh, um, coordinate as, as, as a. So basically the, that, that's the upper point. Everything else remains exactly the same and I will have the cosine here. So sine and cosine are actually, uh, again, it's almost the same. The difference between these functions is only a phase shift. Remember, the graph of sine is something like this. Graph of cosine is this. So one of them is just shifted relative to another. So that's why cosine or sine doesn't really matter. It all depends on initial condition. Where exactly my rope and what uh, and, and, and then everything else follows from it. Uh, <coughs> okay, what else here? Um, we well, basically, I think we are completed. Right. Um, so this equation and all similar equations which can be derived from this one are determining the movement of. Uh, any point on the rope, assuming that this is some kind of an ideal situation um, and all the uh, points uh, on the rope are repeating with certain delay the motions of the, um, the driving end of the rope. Um, now, other than this very, very uh, simplifying uh, I would say um, um, uh, idea, hypothesis, whatever you call it. Um, I, everything else is basically straightforward, very simple mass, and it all depends on um, the phase shift of the of the of the function. By the way, if our initial um, oscillations are not harmonic. It's just any function. Well, well, basically the same consideration will will be will be valid. So, y of x comma t would be equal to y of zero t minus x divided by v. So this formula st still stays, and uh, depending on what exactly this function y of zero something, it can be anything. Um, not necessarily harmonic, uh, but whatever it is, the others, the other points will repeat the movement of the uh, driving end of the rope, uh, shifted in phase by a certain particular value, which depends on how far it is and how fast um, the propagation, wave propagation happens uh, on this uh, rope. Well, but obviously, if it's not wave-like, almost harmonic or something like this, propagate um, movements of the initial point, there will be no propagation. There will be no waves, so to speak. So we, we don't really have to talk about any kind of a weird movement uh, of the initial driving point. Um, we are usually talking about harmonic oscillations of uh, of the driving end of the rope and that would result in more or less to a certain degree of precision um, the repetition using this particular formula or any other incarnation of this. Okay, so I suggest you to read the notes for this lecture. You have to go to unisor.com, choose Physics 14 course and then uh, the uh, part of the course is called Waves and then there is a transverse waves and that's where we will have this lecture called wave equation 2. Uh, wave equation 1 was related to uh, waves in media and their propagation that's a one thing about I mean there are many different wave wave e equations so that's why it's 1 and 2 etc so that one was more for about longitudo longitudinal um, oscillations of media, like for instance air uh, with sound waves. But uh, this particular is about transverse uh, oscillations. So again, I do suggest you to read this lecture and don't forget that uh, most chapters, most uh, parts of the course, they have exams, which you can just take yourself as many times as you want 
just to make sure that you really are mastering the, the contents of this. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much and good luck.